Welcome to the Big Biz Show, featuring insight, analysis, and a lot of stuff that's none of your business. Uh, hold on. This is the Big Biz Show. I think it is their business. Making the markets work for you. Here's the man with the plan, Sully. Well, they're live from the Lap 100 Studios in sunny San Diego, California. Welcome to your Wednesday. Does this week go by fast when we have a day off? And it's like, it's, I used to like that we had a day off, but it's like, God, I don't know, it's about time to get crap done. And I, cause, cause I am fiercely defensive. Are you fiercely defensive of your weekends? Oh. Yes. Like I don't, like I oh. forget about work, like what? Yes. Mm -hmm. We do what now? Right. I mean, I literally like so check, I don't mean to check out, yep. right. but I check out so thoroughly that I need to, and I, and I, you know, like, you know, remember like it's a casual Friday or something like our Thursday. Sure. I don't get ready for the work week anymore. It's on Sunday night. I, I get ready for it. I'm you don't lay your clothes out and everything. No, I don't, you know, you, you, you get the, I used to be the guy to go in on, on Saturday morning, yeah. be the only guy in the office. The boss show up, and even though the boss was there, oh yeah, you know, because I, because I wanted to be, because it was, I, I had this thing that I taught my kids, called feared thing first, meaning yeah. that so oh, yeah. they were they were volleyball players in high school. Plus they had mm -hmm. they had a ton of homework, and I said, girls, I know you, I know volleyball just got out at seven o'clock. If you knock your homework out right now, what is the most feared time? For the American workplace in the U.S., every single week. Do you know? Friday. Sunday Your night. Time? Sunday at 4:43 yeah. p.m. Okay. Exactly 4:40. Now, why do you suppose 4:43 p.m. on Sunday is the is a depressing time for the American worker? Yeah. Because suddenly everybody goes. Mm. Yep. But, but, but 4:43. Yeah, they did. They they <laughs> listen. I'll tell you what. Yeah. And, I, and you can I look at it. Yeah. And you can. And I've looked this up. This is from being in radio, as you know, for sure, a million sure. years. As you have all this. Review, but it, it, it was 4:43. It was probably 4:20, but no. I was going to say, if you celebrate 4:20, then yeah. maybe not. But the point is, if you have nothing hanging over your head, I would say you got the whole weekend. You got nothing to think about. Big time. Sunday, we're still out to dinner. You're still at week. It's still weekend until you are dead asleep. Yeah, but we were both doing morning radio when we were getting up at 3, yeah. 3.30. There is nothing like that Sunday night, 4.43, 5. Yeah. They call it the scaries, oh. Sunday scaries. Yeah. yeah. No, I but knew, then, I knew there was a, some sort so of So wait, thing. do you prepare then Friday for Monday? Or yes, I told, yes, no, no, yes, yeah. you do. I told okay. my girls. Do your homework. I know you just got done. With, you're out right. of school at three. You played volleyball at six in, in a tournament. Just do it now. Mm -hmm. I swear right. you will think you can. And by the way, you can stay out until 11, 11 o'clock tonight. Yeah. yeah. Just do it now. And they would like. Oh, do that. Then they did it. They're in their project. They're doing the freaking dioramas, the whole freaking thing. Right. But they had nothing hanging over their heads, and it was it, it, to this day, they they would say fear thing first. Mm. I don't know how I got into that fear thing first thing, but um, but uh, speaking of who I'm yeah. afraid of, Howie Font is with us once again. Howard, what's up? From New York City, here. the man with the best hair in the thing. Um, wow. If I can't uh, be loved, good. I'd rather be feared. Yeah. <laughs> if I can't be loved, I'd rather. Be <laughs> yeah, that's uh, that's a little just wrong and creepy. Hey, uh, our market is down today for the first time in four days. Is this the just a little bit of profit taking going on? We've got tons of volatility out there, and I think volatility comes with this season because. We're getting the summer slowdowns, which I always love as an investor because this is the time. You buy straw hats in the winter, mm -hmm. you buy umbrellas in the summer. Mm -hmm. I think that's about what's happening here. Howie, take it away. Yeah, I just want to put in perspective. The The market is down today. It's down for the first day in a couple, like you've said. But this, this should happen. People buy, the market pops up really fast. It'd be silly not to sell. And it's because there's overlapping investors with different investment time frames you got day traders and now you know hour traders people that are in and out in an hour or a day yeah and you have long-term investors and if you're in you know if you say okay i'm going to be in this stock for a year but on day three of the investment it's up because in because of nvidia the market's up so much on day three of your investment you're up 20%. Aren't you a little bit of a fool just to not take the gains and walk away? Well, no, so, and I'll tell you why. I'll tell you why. If you if you look at a chart, and we'll get to this in just one second. I won't let you go. You keep your hair. If you look at a chart of the Dow back during the Great Recession, it was 4,500. Yep. And now it's 35,000. Why get out at all? If it was a bargain then, isn't it a bargain now? Certainly. What are we going to look at in 10 years from now when we're 70,000? Right? Uh, That's my you point. Can look at multiple, there's a oh, my God, your volume went out. I can't even hear you. It's amazing. How we thought. Big Biz Show. We'll see you in a minute. <laughs> 443 for you, isn't it, Val? Oh, my. That's called a sunset provision. <laughs> Welcome.
Welcome to the Big Biz Show, featuring insight, analysis, and a lot of stuff that's none of your business. Uh, hold on. This is the Big Biz Show. I think it is their business. Making the markets work for you. Here's the man with the plan, Sully. At the Loft 100 Studios in sunny Southern California. Hope you guys are having a great day as we kind of rebound from the big Memorial Day weekend. It's Wednesday. It's Wait a second. Wednesday. Is, haven't you rebounded by now? Are you, I, know. <laughs> I see you're still wearing your Lands End picnic, uh, uh, oh, God. picnic table. Uh, you had a lot shirt, of picnic shirts. The greatest shirt ever made. Right no. There. Do you know what the greatest one was? Mike, I did morning radio with him. He has pants like that. I do. <laughs> do you know, remember the, the patch? Oh, the patch. Wait, it's a whole outfit? No, that's a, no, it's not a whole outfit. That's a takeoff on the patch pants they used to have from Lands End yeah, yeah. or Duxon Company, one of the two. Right. It was uh, a preppy thing. They're called Madras. <laughs> oh, Hello. thank you. Hello, Madras. <laughs> God. Police not be done, Madre. So have you ever worn them together where the bottom pants are? <laughs> <laughs> have you ever seen Mike and Dave need wedding? Have you ever seen Mike and Dave need wedding dates? Oh yeah. They have. You know what Ren Spooner is? You know those those those, uh, those, yes. out, those Hawaiian, Hawaiian shirts. You could dress your whole family in the same thing. Oh, yeah. Yes. Um, I forget his name. It's not. It's uh, the good one is as uh, Zach uh, Efron. What's the other one? The really funny kid. The guy was. Oh. Uh, um, he was in. Jonah Hill. No, no, he, he no, was no, in. No, uh, no. He was in. Pitch you know, Perfect. I'm pointing at you because it's Glee. Or, no, Pitch oh, Perfect. Glee. What's his name? The guy who played Thumper in Glee. Oh, I, I cannot. Adam. Uh, yes, yes, yes. Got Adam. Adam right. Levine. So funny. Yes. yes. He walks out in a Ren Spooner short sleeve with a belt, top bottom matching. Yeah. That's what I'm talking about. It's, Mikey, I think we got to do that. Yeah. All right, I'll wear him. What the heck? <laughs> Getting down for real. <laughs> <She's> what, <laughs> but it's, uh, he walks in. He walks in slow motion. Getting down for real. With the, with the outfit on. With oh, a pair yeah. of white bucks. What yeah. movie is this? Ooh. Mike and Davey Wedding Dates. That's Fantastic right. movie. Okay. Uh, back to how we fought. Uh, if you're just joining us here, we were talking about the market, and we're talking about uh, uh, that uh, we we uh, lament our weekends if we don't get our stuff done early. I want to talk to you about what you just said because you said, shouldn't we get out and take profits? And and by the way, you're very you're very right to say so. There's two philosophies, though, as I just mentioned. If you look at the, at the chart of the stock market during the Great Recession, when all hope was lost, we're at 4,000, we're losing all our money, and now we're at 36,000 or whatever. If you look at that, if, well, gee, that was a bargain back then. Well, isn't it a bargain now if that's what happens in stock markets? Howie, I'll let you take that one. Oh, in the, in the long term, yes. In the long term, you're exactly right. But you, more than maybe anyone I know, um, know the LA wave principle and how the market dynamics, uh, you know, affect medium short term pricing. And that's just why we're seeing the market downturn today. I think everything's great. The market's going to be double what it is in seven years, uh, you know, in all likelihood. Well, and, and I think what you're talking going. about fairly is day traders and, and day trading. Yeah. Yeah. And, I, and I will tell you, this, I seem like I'm a day trader and I do day trade, but it represents less than a half a percent of my total wealth in terms of what I day trade. Would, so in other words, <clears throat> um, if you want to day trade, hey, what should I buy? Well, buy off all of your debt first, mm -hmm. so you have no credit card debt, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, right. Then after that, uh, pay off um, all of your student loans first. Uh, make sure that we have a, a mortgage and you're not renting, and make sure that your, your car payment uh, is indeed for a car that's getting you to to and from work, and then you can invest. And when you're gonna talk about investing, um, I, I would argue that you're not gonna day trade, you're going to invest in something that either you believe in and you're going to stay in uh, long term because even though Apple has been down over the course of, of its lifetime or Starbucks has been down or Micron or U.S. Steel, still a pretty good company regardless of what that share price is, right? Mm. They're not going anywhere. No. So, if you, so if you bought it, if the reasons you bought it in 19 or in 2000 are still there, why wouldn't you just hold on to it? Now, there is a thrill of, of getting on the ride, meme stocks and such. Do a paper trade for six months and see how you do. Go on a spreadsheet and say, okay, I'm going to buy 100 shares of this stock. And do, do something you can afford. I mean, I'm not suggesting, you know, if, you, if, you're, if your uh, limit's $10,000 and say I'm going to buy $1,000 of this stock and these 10 stocks and see how you do mm -hmm. and trade them here and there. See how you do in six months. If you are now at $20,000 in six months, and I would say dip your toe into the day trading market. Otherwise, uh, leave it for uh, us suckers here. That continue right. to, to, to get bitten, uh, like me and Howie. Um, by the yeah. way, Elliott Wave principle, very simple, what Howie was talking about is, is what we now call technical analysis. And the easiest way to explain it is, um, I forget Elliott's uh, uh, first name, but he came up with the notion back in the 1920s that you can almost predict, uh, you can almost predict what's gonna happen based on crowds 
and their reactions to certain events, okay? So the way I explain it the stock market is, um, well, further to that, we all want what we can't have, right? Mm -hmm. The minute something is, is scarce, we automatically need that. Okay, look at a couple brands I can name, Supreme for one. Supreme would make a t-shirt and they only made 100 of them. Suddenly everyone had to have that 100, okay? In stocks it works like this. Let's say you buy a stock at $100, okay? And let's say you hang on to that stock and that stock dips down to 80. Oh my God, desperation, capitulation. What am I gonna do? I can't sell now. All of a sudden there's a gleam of light. The sun's rising. <laughs> Good news on the horizon. Oh my God, this might be okay. I'm the, hold on. Buy, buy Apple. No, stay in it. Suddenly I'm the smartest guy in the room. <laughs> so if you 100 down to 80 and it hits 100. I'm out. Yep. I just dodged a bullet. Yeah. Right? Most people, if they have 100 and go down to 80, what are they trying to do? Like Mark Twain said, I'm looking for a return of my investment, not on my investment, right? Yeah. That's how the 11 wave principle works. I can predict in a certain... Uh, Duke and Duke I told you to buy. <laughs> right. What, they're buying, then sell. <laughs> the long story short of it is, if you, um, if you can withhold the emotions of the market, and the only way to do that is have a money manager. And I don't care, you don't need to be wealthy, have a money manager. You can open an account at E-Trade or Fidelity or TD Ameritrade or even Robinhood, and they will invest for you. That's how you, that's how you wrangle the emotion of the markets. Howard, you have one last notion on this as you're continuing to calling me, so it's a bit part of the show. <laughs> I just, I, gotcha. <laughs> I, I, I loved the uh, performance art, and every day with you, Sully, is like 4.43 on Sunday. Thank you. <laughs> oh, uh, thank God. <laughs> Wait a minute. Let's I'm not, sure, that, back I'm not sure that's okay. No. Um, Howie, are you one of those people that gets everything done on Friday? I know you personally. I know the answer to this. But, but uh, do you get everything done on, on Friday so you have to worry about it on Sunday? There's always more. But it comes at all times. It doesn't yeah. stop. So I just do it as it comes. Yeah, I, so I, yeah. I cannot stand having anything over my head, so I'm done on Thursday night. That's I'll do a best. couple calls Friday morning. Best feeling that's on earth, it. man. And Greg's heard me say this. Say, so, yeah, I'm out. Don't bother me. I'm out. I'm gone. And he does the same thing. He goes, yeah, nah, I got to go. No. Because not, not answering ain't enough. I don't want a text. And by the way, don't ever send me a text to, telling me you sold me, send me an email. I will yeah. kill you. That's right. a felony. Yeah. Hey, I just sent you an email. Just texting you, and I'm just calling you to tell you, hey, I just sent you the text to tell you it's an email. What about like, let's do lunch? Yeah, I, did, no, I'm, I don't care. Let's yeah. lunch is fine. But do not send me a text to tell me that you sent me an email. Because you just sent me an email. I thought you were a never luncher. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm a never luncher. I'm never meeting is what I am. Well, I do plenty of lunches starting on Friday. <laughs> okay. I might be guilty of the okay. yeah, I know you are. Just sent you, sent you I have email. actually stopped myself from sent doing you, that. Well, you just sent me an email. Why, why did you announce? Long. Look, I you know that hey, you specifically. Texting you. Gonna call you now. <laughs> 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 what the hell? Because it's forewarning. And people are not How about on their the, email. Wait, I would argue how we call me again. There's no cold how calling. Call me again. Okay. I would argue that the phone ringing is the forewarning that you've got a call coming in. <laughs> Who likes hence, to be cold called? Hence the bell. Nobody likes to be cold called anymore. Well, the, the, right? okay, so do you know but what sometimes you, you got to. How about this? You got to. How about this? If you don't have Mary, to. Mary, I don't have to. No. Swipe left. Isn't it interesting that to turn the phone off, you swipe right? Exactly. But in, but, <laughs> right? Swipe left. They, they said yeah. have you swipe left to, to, to deny That's a right. phone call, don't yeah. you think? They got that messed Should up. Should be. Yeah. Should be. Yes, yeah, so I don't need a warning that, um, um, but to, to, I don't know how we got around that rabbit. But <laughs> it, was, it was fun, though. Greg, 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 Any, Greg. Anyone under the age of 30 doesn't call anymore. Greg, calling, Greg who calling lives a life of leisure, by the way. The phone or Greg, who lives a life of leisure, doesn't have a schedule. He's oh. like, no, he and I get more done between 4, 30 a.m. and yeah, 6 a.m. Exactly. via communication. The best time. And then we have a call like about 8 or 9 every morning. Roughly. Then we see, so we, never we don't actually talk for the rest of the day. <laughs> There's like no beautiful. need to. No, Cover like, everything. No. Get it out of the way. Yeah. Move on. That's what I, He's got his Mary stuff to do. I got my stuff Mary in the meantime is creating Google Docs and stuff that she's going to create a Google Doc about. Yeah. Things I need to make Google Docs about yeah. in a Google Doc. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Are you a that small talk master, though? Do you, what do you mean? Like, when if you're at a cocktail party or whatever, just sitting there just doing no, that. To, no. To, to, no, you know me. 
I know. I'm the I king know. of efficiency. It's like, okay, 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 got it. What's crystal clear? What's exactly. Yeah. exactly. Like, if you're just listen, you waste 10 minutes of my time a day. That's 61 hours a year. 61 sure. hours a year. That's a week and a half of work week. Yep. That's part of a vacation. Yeah. If you put it in those perspectives, I told my grand, my kids the other day, you're going to see your parent, you're going to see your grandparents like six more times. <laughs> I mean, when you start putting the ridiculous number on things, it does it like. 10, 10 minutes a day, 61 hours a year. You want to hear something? Okay. If you, if you, that means that there's going to be times you got to call your credit card company. Yes. Right? Right. There's 10 minutes right there. Oh, my God. Right? At least. Yeah, you still see 10 TV. minutes watching this TV show. Yeah. Boom. Gone. Yeah, gone. <laughs> but if you, if, 10, if you waste 10 minutes per day, that's 61 hours a year. You want to hear something crazy? Yeah. Yes. Do you know how long it, I had to do a contest for Ten a minutes. radio station? <laughs> Close. <laughs> what? The actual playing time of the Super Bowl when the when the Rams beat the Titans on the last second. The actual play, like plays, plays. The actual physical play was ten minutes. Is about thirteen and a oh half my God, minutes. That's crazy. No. Thirteen and a half what? minutes of physical play is what it takes to play a Super Bowl. Thank you, Howie. See you next time. All right. What? Up. We're talking about gold and how you are unprepared yeah. for your weekend. See you yeah. in a minute. Loft 100 Studios, The Big Biz Show, and our affiliates and our hosts are not registered investment advisors or broker dealers. Our show hosts make no commitment that the purchase of securities of companies profiled or otherwise mentioned in our programming are suitable or advisable for any person or that an investment in such securities will be profitable in general. Given the nature of the company's profile and the lack of an active trading market for the securities, investing is highly speculative and carries a certain high degree of risk. We profile selected publicly traded and privately held companies on our program. Most of these companies that we profile have provided compensation to Loft 100 Studios and its hosts for the profile coverage. From time to time, we sell shares of the companies profiled in the open market that we receive as compensation for coverage of client companies. But never sell stocks if we are speaking about interviewing or covering a public company who has paid comp Station. Specific questions on compensation can be obtained by contacting producer at salientgroup.com. Listeners should verify all claims and do their own due diligence before investing in any securities mentioned on this program. Investing in securities is speculative and carries a high degree of risk. We encourage our investors to invest carefully and read the investor information available at the websites on the Securities and Exchange Commission at sec.gov and or the Financial Industry Regulatory Authority, FINRA, at www.finra.org. Studios in Southern California. To all the men and women of the United States Armed Forces, where you are watching and listening, we are in over 175 countries and all the ships at sea. On the American Forces Network, thank you for what you do for us. Costa, Mary Burke Godwin, 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 Greg Todorov, our executive producer. Silly. Hey. Good to see you today. Uh, a little volatility in the market. Market's down for the first time in four days. Uh, market works this way because different investors have different time horizons that uh, that they want to invest in. Some are day traders. They've got you know you can have day traders that look at moving averages that are what a stock's going to do within the last 20 seconds versus a long moving average which is two minutes. I look at a 50 day moving average and a 200 day moving average. But there are micro traders that 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 will day trade minute like a, a bazillion times electronically within a minute. Long story short, so. So, like I say, stay away from the damn day trading, please. If you want to day trade, do a, do it, do a, do a paper trade, open up an Excel spreadsheet, and, and fake it for six months. Act like you have ten thousand dollars to invest. Invest in how many companies you can invest in ten thousand bucks, and see how you do in six months. Ooh, love and if you set it and forget it and don't day trade, then just set it and forget it anyway. Don't worry sure. about day trading. Yep. Right? Um, so, last of all, did we did we determine uh, that you are? A person that gets it all done on Friday before the weekend, because I, because I, I think it's so critical. I do, and and th this is not financially speaking, but I make sure that all of my yard work and chores and stuff is in the bag by Friday at about four o'clock. Do you know what I used to do as a kid? Just reminded me. Hmm. So my, I was an only child, and my parents were, and I, I surfed, I played, I was like, I was going somewhere. Sure. And my parents made sure that I wasn't going to get in trouble, so they loaded me up. Why do you think I get up at four thirty now? Mm -hmm. I'd get up at 5 before they were up. It's like, I'm going to the beach. See ya. Wait, wait. Nope. I yeah. got it all checked it out. That's right. Done That's and right. dusted. Done and Did dusted. Do you have a little checklist on the wall? 
Yeah, yeah, I also had a little notebook at eight years old that said, stop worrying. And, uh, <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> I will tell you this tragic thing. It was, it was, I had a, you know those little notebooks, the little spiral notebooks? I had one of those things. Yeah. And, I, and, I, and I, I looked and I found it in one of those little cigar boxes where your Boy Scout stuff is. Oh, yeah. And, I, and on, on the first page, it said date, allowance, expense, balance. That's awesome. I kept my own books at age eight. Yep. Wow. Not because I wanted to. <clears throat> because I had an evil, evil mother. This is such a crucial answer. It is not good. No, this is why I'm effed up. You don't do that to an eight-year-old. <laughs> you don't, you little box, little check box. <laughs> Did I earn mommy's love this week? <laughs> 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 Basically. <sighs> Thanks, Mike. One more day, I would've been over it. <laughs> Bobby, your coat hangs. Bobby, mommy drinks because you cry. <laughs> 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 my new book. <laughs> David Garofalo is the chairman and CEO of Gold Royalty Corp. He is our resident gold expert, and we are so happy that he's been so generous with his time. Uh, he is on the NYSE American Exchange under the stock symbol G-R-O-Y. Here he is once again to talk all things gold, all things market. Boy, every time I look at the news, David, not only does it bode well for your company because you're doing such great things, but if I just take the top-down look at gold as it relates to how the market's trading, could you ever get a buy sign on gold than you have right now? considering the volatility of the stock market and inflation and everything else? Yeah, I mean, there's so many factors that are feeding into this bull run for gold. Uh, but I think fundamentally it comes down to interest rates, which when you factor in the real rate of inflation is deeply into negative territory. If you're owning treasuries, your savings are getting depleted day in, day out uh, by inflation. It's getting eaten away because inflation isn't 3 or 4%. It's 15 to 20% when you consider all the things that we need and necessities of life. So gold is preserving value in a fraught uh, equity market and a fraught uh, money market right now. And it's really preserving uh, uh, purchasing power, if you will. David, will, is, is gold always going to be the it? Will silver er, over, ever overtake it? Copper, aluminum, aluminum? I don't know. Is, is it always going to be gold? No, look, I think silver has great fundamentals as well. Uh, it has incredible industrial applications. On, in solar panels and the like. So when we're looking at a decarbonizing economy, it's going to do well fundamentally. But it's also trading as a proxy for gold. And typically, the gold price to silver price ratio in a bull market is as low as 40 to 1. Today, it's wow. closer to 80 to 1. So that means that as gold goes through a prolonged bull run here in the next little while, silver has the potential to outperform it by twofold as we see that ratio narrow. When you look at the rest of the metals complex, mm -hmm. the one I'm most bullish about is copper. Uh, I think copper fundamentals are incredible. When you look at the battery metals out there, that's the one that's most intensively used in electrification of our grids, in electrification of our vehicle fleets. Uh, the amount of copper used in an electrical vehicle is three times what it's used in an in internal combustion engine. So there's gonna be a massive amount of demand and there's this incredible supply squeeze on copper, and I think copper is at least a double or a triple from here. It is crazy how good my catalytic converter theft ring is doing <laughs> <laughs> because of copper. Hey, David, I, I got to say, you know, you being the finance company or the, the royal, uh, financial institution, uh, as a royalty company, you're a financial institution for the mining industry, and, 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 you, and you're sort of at the top of the line there. But from what you're saying, though, I've heard the adage that if you have a gold mine, you also have a copper mine. Or if you have a gold mine, you also have it because of the tailings and everything else. That's got to still bode well for you regardless of the top-down econ economic numbers. Talk about the company itself because you've got a ton of potential growth as, we, as we're talking about to, uh, on, on, this, uh, on this graphic that's from your website. Talk about that because it all goes into the one, to, to one pile here and this all bodes well for you guys anyway. Yeah, our revenue is doubling this year at a minimum. Actually, we just made a, an acquisition of a major copper stream this week that will actually enhance our revenue growth beyond the 100% we previously guided. We're just going through the number uh, compilation right now. We'll re-guide our revenue guidance going forward, but it's going to be a positive development in the short term because it's a very prolific copper mine in Bosnia that we acquired a copper stream on with an 18-year reserve life. And so we're looking at 60% compound and annual growth in our revenue through the end of the decade. Wow. That'll only be further enhanced uh, by this copper stream acquisition. I want to see Mike in the back of one of them dump trucks with a hard hat on. <laughs> A pair of Daisy Dukes pointing people around with a clipboard. David Garofalo, David, a little short on time. We'll talk to you next week. Thank you, pal. David Garofalo, his stock symbol is E-R-O-Y. <laughs> Why am I in Daisy Dukes? <laughs> I'm, looking like, I'm looking at the shirt right now. I can't.
you know, you roll that up and tie it like this. I mean, Carhartt does not make those. I've checked. <laughs> <laughs> More big bills back in a minute. After these words. Loft 100 Studios, The Big Biz Show, and our affiliates and our hosts are not registered investment advisors or broker dealers. Our show hosts make no commitment that the purchase of securities of companies profiled or otherwise mentioned in our programming are suitable or advisable for any person or that an investment in such securities will be profitable in general. Given the nature of the company's profile and the lack of an active trading market for the securities, investing is highly speculative and carries a certain high degree of risk. We profile selected publicly traded and privately held companies on our program. Most of these companies that we profile have provided compensation to Loft 100 Studios and its hosts for the profile coverage. From time to time, we sell shares of the companies profiled in the open market that we receive as compensation for coverage of client companies. But never sell stocks if we are speaking about interviewing or covering a public company who has paid comp Station. Specific questions on compensation can be obtained by contacting producer at salientgroup.com. Listeners should verify all claims and do their own due diligence before investing in any securities mentioned on this program. Investing in securities is speculative and carries a high degree of risk. We encourage our investors to invest carefully and read the investor information available at the websites on the Securities and Exchange Commission at sec.gov and or the Financial Industry Regulatory Authority, FINRA, at www.finra.org. What is going on, everybody? It is the Big Biz Show, live from the Loft 100 Studios in sunny, sunny California. I know it looks a little different. It looks a little different. Costa, Greg Todorov is there. Mary Bird Godwin is there. And I'm here where somebody normally is uh, standing and kibitzing and chirping, but <laughs> my master plan has finally yeah. come together. <laughs> How'd you do it, Mike? Whoa! Whoa. No. Oh. <laughs> Even that word. Wait a second. I'm sorry? That's your plan. Is there, <sighs> failed. Were, oh. were we back to one? Was this, oh. is this what happens? Is this is this what happens when I bust the door? Locked you in the bathroom. And you uh and you is this, so this is your fantasy? <laughs> Did you guys trick at? him on purpose? Okay, is this, there, is this, a is this your is this your there's a load-bearing member in the back that I finally got all the rivets out of, and I just figured today was going to be the day. You were like you were smooth as a gravy oh, sandwich, right? Yeah. You just, slipped on in like you were. Wow. Like it was like you're like. Yeah. Whoop, yeah. The door. You're like, have you done this, it Mike? Is, be. is your is this conspiracy? <laughs> is this something that you often by yourself? Like, do you have a little thing set up at home? Always. Practice <laughs> <laughs> within the mirror. Uh, yes. I mean, I was going to say, if there's if there's something set up at home, you have a little, I, have uh, a little refrigerator box with a couple. Well, of we, you have a breakfast bar, and oh, Meg, I see. Oh, Meg plays our Jason Banks, and she just goes like this to me. And who plays a uh, uh, who plays uh, who plays the walking picnic table? Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. And we'll put the dogs up on the. Did you the bar interview anybody side. while I was we gone? We missed you. I miss you very much. Did so. you interview anybody when I was gone? No, we didn't. I just uh, I, I literally got to the point where my plan had come to fruition. Yeah. Thanks to Greg Todorov for that line, by the way. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we were about to, uh, I was about I, to explain that where, where you were, maybe. Well, can I, can, yeah. Well, can, let me ask you something. So after talking to Corey, our social media guy, and yes. you're, I met you through, uh, thank you. This, turn this, this was a social media company. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> the, was. So Mary, <laughs> our band got to play at a music festival, a very large music festival called Kaboo. Yes. It was a very big deal. Right. And the social media company for Kaboo was called this company here. Okay. And Mary was our person, like our liaison. Yeah. Okay. Because uh, yeah. I and did the was, social media. And for she Kaboo. was fantastic. She was so good. And I remember after it was all over, we could we couldn't find her. Like what what happened to that girl? We need we need someone in any organization. And I was with um, not to drop a name, but the mayor of San Diego at the yacht club. Yeah. And uh, rolling through, uh, perhaps. Or not perhaps. 
the lover shirt. <laughs> and I, I, somebody said to me, and they recognized me from radio and television locally, hey, my sister used to work with you. And I said, who's that? She goes, Mary Burt Godwin. And it wasn't even like, Mary who? It was like, we had been like, sending out these emails to ever like Mary at social media. Like, we were like throwing crap out there to try to find her. Really? And it was her sister. There I am. And here I am. And here he is. Now, that was, you now, know, five years ago. Now, were you working for them? Did I steal you from them? I or had you departed? Had just departed. And I didn't want yeah. to say who the company is because we had a bad experience with them because the guy was a little bit of a BS. Like, like my, my philosophy on social media five years ago was there was a lot of ad agencies that said, oh, well, we're a digital media company. And they didn't know crap. Zero. Mary and I on our own journey, and you knew you knew a lot, but we forgot more in the last five years of what's real and what's not real. Oh, yeah. well, it, it you went changes. to every single convention, every single best practices, yeah. education, and all. And what, what after hearing um, Corey talk, he seems to be the new paradigm on what's happening. Yeah, well, and a lot, it, it changes constantly. So I'm looking forward to talking to him because it, it's always, okay. it's ever changing. Yeah. Well, I, and, and my thing is, is it, so it, does it really come down to the fact that TikTok is the current flavor, as he says. Well, I think it depends on what the brand is. Because I think Instagram is really current. No, but look, it, it depends on what you're selling and what you're marketing. If you're a, if you're a, a makeup, you're gonna go like crazy on gangbusters on TikTok. Because what about what if you're music? What if you're a band? Is that uh, you could go viral on TikTok? Sure. What if you're selling but ugly, crappy shirts? It depends on what age you're you're targeting. What if you like if the you're life a targeting of, Mike? Then no. What if you're a big believer in the uh, in the Church of the Subgenius? Do as little as, as you as you can, but be as successful as possible. No, because I'll tell you what, you've got to be consistent no. and you got to put a no. lot of work That's in French. on TikTok. No, very no. French. No. Very French. No, yeah. no. People, the people watching on TikTok are not buying. Are they? Unless they're young girls that are buying the makeup products. So why not just reverse engineer it and, and let's form uh, a new uh, Josie and the Pussycats uh, oh. fake band like we had when we were kids? It was cartoon. Like why wouldn't you just do everything to go to where the money is? Like yes. like if all yeah. the money, the, all the money is between what 65 and 90, they're not spending any money. Yeah. But if the, if the tweeners are spending money, remember the limited was a store my daughter. Oh yeah. Did? They went to the limited T O O, which is a limited two, which is yes. a tweener limited yes. thing, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. where it was for that when they say tweeners, I, uh, was that maybe twelve, to, between, eleven to thirteen. Oh, eleven to thirteen. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I remember the, the girls. We would be there, and then we would like spend boatloads of money because we're sort of growing. So you're there every other month. Mm -hmm. But that was the thing, and I was thinking, this is a license to steal. Yeah. Right? So those are the but, girls that are watching TikTok. And no, they are they spending money? If they get their mom's credit card, yes. No. Or if they, you yeah. know, ask for it for Christmas right. or whatever, it depends on what it is. So I should put but this I'm up asking. on Liver Spot. Yeah. Right? Okay. Yeah. That's but I am interested to ask Corey. My number one question well, for here. Corey is Corey, that, yeah. Corey, so is, 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 is she just telling you falter all or because <laughs> don't you like because I, I can see him sitting across the table just nodding politely and smiling. Well, Corey, yeah, yeah, yeah. matching. Let actually. me tell you let me tell you the real story. So what's the real story? Are we accurate here? Are people not spending money where we think they're spending money? Is, is it that criteria specific? You're accurate. Uh, people are spending money on on TikTok, but you got to remember who the buyer is. And so, a lot of the times, even though the kids might be following or watching the influencer, at the end of the day, the mom or the dad has the checkbook. Yep. And where are they hanging out? That's what I want to know. Well, and and I think Mary's to Mary's point, I have to believe because I don't. It's funny. I used to love watching those reels. I didn't even know what they're called reels. So you told me actually, <laughs> Corey. Corey, when he was last on, he said those are reels. I used to love watching those things. I don't watch them anymore because I got tired of the music. And I got tired of the same voice. I got tired of them saying, looking for part two. So I just have stopped completely looking at social really? media. Really? I have. But see, I, that's, I mean, well, I'd like to hear Corey talk about this because I think that Reels for Instagram is a great place to sell products and to be active, but you have to put in the energy to make them so you're not But isn't this it. Reels and Instagram, good. wait, Corey, but isn't Reels and Instagram just TikTok anyway? For old people. Oh, yeah, they, they've stolen features <laughs> every time something comes out. Snapchat was stories, and now Instagram stole Reels from TikTok. There's no doubt about it, but... That's motion moves the needle on Instagram. So if you're going to be on Instagram, you have to do reels. Yep. Hey, Corey, ImpactSocialMedia.com and CoreyProman.com are two great brands where you guys uh, really move the needle on, on digital marketing. I know you're, you're a keynote speaker and, 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 and you talk about businesses seeing better results. What is the first thing you look at? Because we're talking to, uh, on this program, folks that have a, a parking lot restriping company all the way up to uh, Anderson Consulting. And at the highest level, I mean, you've got a Barry Manlow audience. You got the five-year-olds and the seventy-five-year-olds. One of each. What is, is there? Is there a common ground here when you're talking about consulting? Yes, and thank you for asking. I love that analogy, Barry Manlow. was perfect. Uh, well, I was going to say uh, I was going to say Donny Osmond, but I figured he was too, he was <laughs> too young for that. Too. 
It's about being authentic. If if you look like a billboard or brochure on social media, you're doing it wrong. If you're going to do it right and actually sell on social, you got to come out and be yourself. Um, and that's how you move the needle by, by if you're funny, be funny like you are. And if you're not, don't be funny, uh, but just be yourself. That's the key. So Corey, you know, I was actually going to talk about this topic because I hear the word authentic all the time, a little ad nauseum, like everyone's using that as a buzzword. So can you, I, I just went to your feed and I did see you have lots of tips for people. Can you be specific as to where a brand could be authentic and what that looks like? Absolutely. I was just swiping through a bunch of feeds recently, and the ones that get the most engagement are the ones that show real people. How many times have you searched through social media profiles and all you've seen is stock images? Mm -hmm. wow. It's got to be real, authentic people, and you got to be serving others, not self serving. How can you add value? How can you help? Mm. That's the answer. Hey, Corey, can you stay with us? I, we're, we're, I want to bring you to the next break if, you, if you've got some time. His name is Corey Perlman. Uh, he is the social media's keynote speaker, but he's he also the owner of Impact Social Media. You can find his keynote information by going to CoreyPerlman.com or go to ImpactSocialMedia.com with more of him because I want to talk about um, I want to talk about why me and Mike think they should bring back MySpace. Big Beat Show, one along. Wherever you are, wherever you're listening, we appreciate it. Coming live from the Lost 100 Studios, Southern, Southern California, Mike Costa, Mary Bird Godwin, Greg Todorov, and our man who lost his razor, Sully. What? I'm getting, I'm getting compliments on it. I think it looks good. The oh, problem is, is that they haven't come close enough because they haven't had water, so they're not, you know. Yeah, you stay over there. I'm walking, I'm a walking chicken soup for the soul. <laughs> oh my God. No, do you know what I did? No, can I tell you what I did? Can I tell you what I did? Tell us. So, so first of all, just catching you up here. Um, I, I, I know that uh, it's not casual Wednesday, it's I slept in my car Thursday. Two things, my daughter is in town and staying at a campground at a surf spot that is right across the street from your house, by the way. Yep. One of my friends has an Airstream that they've redone. Oh. And it's just the coolest thing. So she's staying there. So I went over to see her there and um, stayed there too long. She couldn't go home and change a shirt. In the meantime, I was going to take a shower and realize I have no water Ew. because water of the, the big tree that grew into our water main. Okay. That, so I'm um, sucked. So what I did, I just, I, I um, um, uh, may or may not have uh, put a, a nickel's worth of, uh, um, well, not laundry detergent, but it was dishwasher detergent in the jacuzzi. <laughs> and, uh, you know, did my own little... Board short, there was a board short bubble bath. It happens. You know what? You got the most important parts clean. You know what? It, you know, having a great, great time. <laughs> board short bubble bath, a big biz show, big bag boom. You know, I, I could see, it was, it was, it was, well, do you know what happened is I saw a picture of my daughter Delaney, uh, which I will show you at the end of the program here, where they used to put literally a nickel's worth, like it's the size of a nickel, of dishwasher soap in the jacuzzi and run. Always. And it went, it's like mashed potatoes yes. uh, three stories high. Crazy. And I said, well, face her. So I said, I had no water. What are you doing? Oh, we have a jacuzzi. Yeah. Drink. Didn't think to put shampoo. I went to the frickin' kitchen uh -huh. and got the Dawn <laughs> degreaser out yep. and dumped it Lovely. in there. You know, it's. Did she come out with rashes on her skin? <laughs> no, it was me. I just <laughs> run in there. I'm, oh, I, you. Yeah. I'm fine. I'm a little shaky, but I'm okay. Uh, Corey Perlman is with us. He's a social media keynote speaker. You can go to CoreyPerlman.com. If I'm not mistaken, our good buddy Troy Hazard. Um, um, Greatest line ever. Troy Hazard comes on the air with us. First time ever in the U.S. Me and Rusty doing Big Biz Show. And, 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 and he's, not, he's not a keynote speaker yet. He wrote his book, The Naked Entrepreneur. And he's, he's, he's talking about businesses that have to pay. And Russ says, did you say to pay? That fast. The guy's chrome dome. Did, he goes, and sometimes you have to pay. Russ, it, did you say to pay? <laughs> Greatest moment if of all only time. only we could find that. I, know, I swear. No, we I can find, find that. I'm guaranteed Troy Hazard. He introduced to Corey Perlman. Corey, thanks for coming on. I don't know if you know that story or not, Corey, but I basically made Troy Hazard. <laughs> so let's let's face it. Hey, I want I to. Um, I want you know it's what's interesting. I've always found prior to social media, Mike and I have been in radio business for 33 some odd years. I remember talking about this as a talk radio topic. Was people had this badge of honor? Oh, I don't watch TV. Mm -hmm. What's it? I don't know why. Why, why would that be a good bad? Why are you better? And now, sort of a badge of honor, well, I don't do social media. Yes. I would, I mean, it's, it's slightly less difficult to quit heroin uh -huh. than to quit social media. And, and I think that's part of it. But I think the other piece of this, though, is there's a lot of traffic, Corey, and where it's not 
interesting content, and it's just advertising coming at me about the latest, the greatest, and, and again, um, just because it's on the internet doesn't make it true. Talk to us about how you break through and cut through that, because like, that's got to be a big challenge with a lot of your clients. It is. I, I, I would say putting uh, soap in your hot tub and putting that on TikTok will make you go viral. You can't teach sure. that, can you? Boom. You, can't, you cannot yeah. teach that. I'm just telling you right now. No. Yeah. No, that was that was that was gold right there. Um, breaking through the noise. Uh, you're, and, and also you mentioned people not wanting to be on social. And I totally get that. As long as it's you authentically creating content, you know, maybe it's through your phone or through your writing, you don't have to be the one that's actually putting it on social. So I sell a lot of business owners who don't like social media, they can still be on social media uh, by simply creating the content, and letting somebody else post it for them. Corey, where does, where does YouTube fall into all of this? Do you consider YouTube a, a social media platform? I personally don't. I look okay. at it more like a, a website, if you will, you know, where you can put videos. It's owned by Google. It's the second largest search engine in the world. But I don't consider it social media because there's not a lot of engagement that happens on YouTube. Okay. Uh, it's interesting. When you say, and define engagement, because I always think engagement means that I saw it. And that's not engagement. Uh -uh. The fact that I saw it doesn't. So I think that's a good definition for you to figure out for us. Yeah, likes, comments, shares, clicks, conversions, I would say are all engagement metrics. Um, views saves are the well, lowest right? common. I guess shares Again? and saves are similar, but when you save something, that's yeah. going to tell the algorithm that somebody really likes it even more than just hearting it, right? Because anyone can just push that. But if you save it, that means you're going to come back to it later. Listen to you 100%. talking about, like, you're, like you are so infected by this because you, I bet you can't enjoy social media anymore. Like we can just look at it and say, oh, oh look no, at OJ Simpson. But but you but you I get, get lost. lost in it for sure. Well, it must be sometimes fun. I click and it. it's not a criticism. It's like I bet that it wrecks it for you. Um, yes and no, but I do get. I, but I'm someone I love social media because I actually like when feeds or ads come into my feed of products that I like. I don't hate it. I like it because then I know. You know, I mean, it's weird when I just have talked about something and then it's in my feed because then I feel like it's a creeper. But I enjoy <laughs> that. You know, I enjoy that part of it because people are Instagram is serving me reels that I enjoy because they have serving me out. you reels. They serve me real. Do I have is the, that? Wait, wait, wait. Is that, the, Corey, the, is that why? Listen, this happened yesterday. I was talking about uh, Diane Lane, the actress. Is that there how she is? Is she calling? Howie again? No, <laughs> sorry. Actually, that's not my phone for once. So it's Diane I, I, I was, Lane. I was, <laughs> Diane Lane, the actress, uh, we were talking about for some reason, I know yeah. Chris and I, and all of a sudden, my Instagram had Diane Lane on it. Well, is that, oh, is yeah. that a thing? Is Listening. this a thing? Because it's got to be a thing, right? It is, and I had a guy once say to me, you know, Corey, I was on your 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 Facebook, and I saw nothing but Budweiser this and Budweiser that. Why are you Why are you serving me up beer? And I was like, buddy, that's not me. That's you that they're right. looking at. That's your algorithm. <laughs> hey, you know, this, this leads me that's into a great. big question, though, Corey. How important are paid ads? And if a brand wants to do social media well, how important is a budget to their strategy? And you know, do they have to keep doing Facebook ads and Instagram ads? Mandatory. I think That's small I businesses yeah. have to have an ad budget in order to be successful on social. I think, I, and, and talk about that ad budget because a Super Bowl commercial, last I checked for 60 seconds, Mike, what was oh. it, $3.6 million or yeah. something like that? It, uh, you, can get, you can get a 60 second spot on here for about $1.380, uh, by the way. So, a uh, piece of cake. Well, what is it? What, like, what's a reasonable ad budget? Can a small consulting firm or a delicatessen afford to do this? Or do you need hundreds of thousands of dollars per month? They can. That's the beauty of social media. Uh, small budgets, anywhere between $300 and $1,300, uh, can get you tons of results on social media. And it's a great way to start. And if you're seeing results, then you can increase it. So start small and then add when you see, see it working. Do you know what I want to talk to you about next time we have you on the internet? We hope you'll come back continually, and I hope you come to San Diego at some point. But I heard that if we just decided to spend, let's just say, $30,000 on social media ads today, that it doesn't necessarily mean crap compared to a trusted advertiser who spends $5 a day for five years. We're going to get into that next time. Corey, Hi. thank you, buddy. I appreciate it. Corey Froman's his name. CoreyFroman.com, ImpactSocialMedia.com, digital marketing keynote speaker and the expert, and apparently uh, Mary's new business partner. Got it. Yes. Interview him, even though we're off in this real house. I have more questions. We'll see you tomorrow. I know. Did you see me light up? I saw it. Well, listen, it'd be nice for one of us to ask a question. <laughs>